The presidency of Barack Obama, now at just about its halfway point, has already been a presidency of historic firsts. But tonight there are two more firsts to add to the list. This was President Obama today in the nation of Burma. That's him with the president of Burma. Uh, And here's President Obama today in Cambodia, alongside that nation's prime minister. These trips to Burma and to to Cambodia today represent the first visits by a sitting U.S. president to either of those countries ever. And on this pre-Thanksgiving trip he's on, the president also squeezed in a trip to our most longstanding ally in the region, to Thailand. So the president is traveling right now in a part of the world that is very important to the United States, obviously, important to our position in the world. It is important in particular to this president's view of us as a world power, specifically as a Pacific power. But awkwardly, this trip happens to be going on while something worrying and compelling is happening in a totally unrelated part of the world very far away. And so there is our president in Thailand, standing there with the prime minister of Thailand. But our president in this setting is fielding questions about something that's going on 4,000 miles away, around the other side of the globe, in the Middle East. There's no country on earth that would tolerate missiles raining down on its citizens from outside its borders. So uh, we are fully supportive of Israel's right to defend itself from missiles landing on people's homes and workplaces and potentially killing uh, civilians. My message to all of them was uh, that uh, Israel has every right to expect that it does not have missiles fired into its territory. If that can be accomplished uh, without uh, a ramping up of Uh, military activity in Gaza, that's preferable. That's not just preferable for the people of Gaza, it's also preferable for Israelis, because if Israeli troops are in Gaza, uh, they're much more at risk uh, of incurring fatalities or uh, being wounded. The long-simmering conflict between Israel and Gaza boiled over on Wednesday of last week after Israel killed the top commander of Hamas in an airstrike. Since then, it's been five straight days of Israeli airstrikes on Gaza and five straight days of rocket barrages from Gaza into Israel, including some rockets targeting uh, the big population centers like Tel Aviv and even Jerusalem. The big question now is whether this is as far as it's going to go, whether both sides feel like they have accomplished whatever they felt like they needed to accomplish with this exchange of force. Or, alternatively, whether Israel is going to roll these tanks that it has massed on the border over that border for a big ground incursion into Gaza. Israeli officials have authorized the call-up of 75,000 military reservists. They've mobilized about 30,000 troops so far, and they are making it clear that they just might turn this thing into a ground war. And so, yes, it is a little unsettling, a little strange to see the president traveling in Asia while this big conflagration is happening in the Middle East. But this is sort of the way the presidency works. This happens, and it happens pretty much to every president. I mean, remember when the Libya war was kicking off last year, President Obama Obama at that point was in South America. Back in 2006, when the Lebanon war was kicking off, for that matter, President George W. Bush at the time was in Germany. When you are the president, the presidency travels with you. When international crises happen, you weigh in, no matter where you are. And President Obama is weighing in right now with clear support for Israel, but he's also putting the weight of the United States behind the idea of de-escalation, encouraging Israel to not, for example, start the ground war that they are threatening to start. And that position is essentially where the, well, at least most of the world is uh, with this conflict right now. The head of the United Nations, Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, went to Egypt today where he said he would appeal personally for de-escalating, for ending the violence. Why did he go to Egypt to do that? Well, after ousting Hosni Mubarak and a revolution and electing a Muslim Brotherhood president, Egypt's role as a potential peacekeeper in this conflict has never, ever been more important. The Egyptian prime minister today said that, quote, negotiations are going on as we speak, and I hope we will reach something soon that will stop this violence and counterviolence. The whole world is essentially working on trying to de-escalate this conflict. The European Union weighed into that effect as well today, as did Russia. Russia 
reportedly preparing a U.N. resolution calling for a ceasefire. Probably our closest ally abroad in matters of war and peace is Britain. And the Brits are taking much the same line as President Obama, although they are perhaps being even more direct about it. The British Foreign Secretary saying today that Hamas bears principal responsibility for what's going on in Gaza right now. But then he also warned that, quote, a ground invasion of Gaza would lose Israel a lot of the international support and sympathy they have in this situation. He continued, quote, a ground invasion is much more difficult for the international community to sympathize with or support. So the world, at least the world of the United States and our allies, is pretty much speaking with one voice here. Israel, ixnay on the whole ground war thing. That is the message from the president. That is the message from our allies. That is the message from the international community. That is the message from the Europeans. That is the message from the Egyptians. And even though our own president is traveling abroad in Asia, that is the word from the mouth of our own president. Let's de-escalate here. Everybody agrees.